All right, now we're going to uh, prepare the fiberglass cloth to lay up the mold. We're going to start with a three quarter ounce cloth, which gives this uh, real thin stuff. I'll show you how I cut it. All right, so the first layer is going to be the three quarter, three quarter ounce cloth. And that's going to be uh, put over the splooge, which you'll see in the uh, later on in the video. And that's to fill all the uh, sharp angles, cracks, crevices, and so forth. So what I usually do, I cut them into pretty much two by two sections. You don't have to be particularly uh, detailed about this. You just want to get a bunch of small scraps so that you can uh, fill those cavities and sharp angles and so on and so forth. I'm now going to uh, prep the resin, the tools and everything for how I do things. I'm sure other people do different. Anyhow, here's the uh, regular brush. So I'm just going to trim it square. Now that it's nice and square, it allows you to uh, lay down the cloth a lot better. I'm using a Aero Marine uh, resin product. I've been using them for about 12, 13 years and never had a problem. Love the stuff. So two to one ratio by volume, not by weight. So it's very easy. So what I do is I use these uh, little, uh, I guess they're medical plastic cups. I'm not sure. But they're in uh, ounces, fluid ounces or milliliters. And it makes it real good. So 20 to one here. I mean, uh, 20 millimeters here to 10 millimeters of hardener and everything should just go great. So now I'm getting ready to uh, mix the splooge up, which I use for um, doing the filling of all the crevices and stuff. So what I'm going to do is use uh, my mixing stick, which is just a popsicle thing. I square the ends off and this allows me to uh, mix into the bucket a lot better. So now we're going to just put our 10 milliliters of hardener. Like so. Now the 20 millimeters of resin. And it'll be time to put the gloves on and get going. But one thing I want to point out is when I begin any kind of mold, I usually mark the level of the resin, which is there. What it is I'm laying up, in fact, this uh, is going to be a complete tail today. And uh, this allows me to judge how much resin I'm going to need if I've got, you know, if I'm getting low and I need to uh, lay a small or medium sized part up. So that's just one little trick. Another little trick I use is uh, containers are getting all so expensive and they pretty much throw away, fill up the, uh, you know, the dumps and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I like to have, you know, bean soup or whatever. So uh, what I did is I purchased a special uh, can opener which cuts the edge off, I mean cuts the lid off, leaving a nice smooth edge and it can also be re-put back on as a, a cover. If you're interested in seeing that, I'll... Uh, Take a photograph of it and try and get the information on where you can order it. But every uh, can of bean soup or whatever, I can save as a mixing bowl. Okay, now I'll just add the uh, hardener. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mix about maybe, uh, I'm going to mix all this batch up. But what I'm going to do is when I'm uh, adding the microspheres and fillers to the resin to uh, create the splooge, I'm not going to use it all. I'm going to leave some of it in uh, this container. And uh, that way, if I need a little bit more resin, I can add it. If I don't, 
I've got some to begin the layup with. Now it's time to mix the splooge. So we've got our resin. It's pretty much uh, been mixed up. I'm going to add just a little touch, maybe about 20% of uh, cotton flock, just to bind it, give us a bit more strength. And then the rest of it's going to be uh, microspheres, which is in this bag here. And we're going to probably need quite a bit of it. The uh, splooge mix should uh, be about the you consistency like... of mayonnaise. You don't want it too runny because what will happen is when you put it on the sidewalls, it'll run down and uh, run out of the detail, which is not the optimum thing. Here we go. I think we got it mixed in now. Yeah, that'll do us. So I'm going to try something new today. The other day I was watching a video of uh, another composite guy. And instead of using, I like to use these shrinks. He, uh, he used one of these, uh, I guess, Ziploc bags. Kind of like a, uh, what do you call them? Pastry bag type thingy magic. So I'm going to give it a go. May not work. May work fabulous. So let's uh, let's see how we do. Let's see. I guess we probably need to zip this up real good. And uh, I guess we'll make a little surgical incision. I'm going to make it kind of tiny. Whoops, <laughs> might be a bit too big. Well, let's uh, let's see what we're doing here. Whoa. Okay. All right, let's see if this thing's going to work. Whoops. Where the hell am I? <laughs> uh, it does kind of lay out okay. I'm not sure I like the uh, feel of it. Though. I've got too much air in there somewhere. Yeah, anyway, we'll uh, we'll continue. So what I'm doing, I'm going around all these uh, sharp corners and edges. You know, I'm going to abort this mission, and I'm going to go back to the way I'm used to. Yeah, I didn't uh, feel comfortable with that that method, so I'm going to go back to this way, which is just uh, I have a nice shrink. It allows me a real nice. Uh, Control. Done a bit too much in here, but anyhow. So you want this thick, but you want it sort of thin enough so it will flow itself out into these cavities and such. And uh, self level. And then we'll uh, hit it with the heat gun very briefly. And that might pull any. Uh, uh, bubbles, what well, was probably hidden in there. There's always bubbles. And that's what you want to get out. And remember, you don't want to get too carried away with this stuff because every one bit you put on is more weight. So we're just going to fill some of these things up. I have built just one more of these Takano, so I have an idea of what, uh, where I was having problems with some of the cavities. Oops. So you're getting air bubbles in there. So I'm just going to sort of come along here a little bit, help it along. All right, that's good there. I think I may have made this just slightly sloppy. Yeah, this was one of our problem areas. So I'm going to leave just a little space so that the air can leak out. All right, we'll first move down to this section. All right, we've got uh, all the uh, heavy duty stuff done. 
So what I'm going to now is another method I'm going to try for the first time is actually to brush some of the splooge on in these detail, these shallow detail areas where it doesn't really need a pile of stuff. But I was getting a little problem with sometimes uh, little mini voids in these edges on the first fuse we laid up. So we're just going to give it a shot. Normally I would uh, completely cover the uh, the mold half with uh, clear resin prior to putting the cloth on. But I'm going to try something else this time. Hopefully we'll have a little more success than we did with that bloody Ziploc bag. <laughs> I wasn't too impressed with, but probably my fault. Probably used a uh, a bag which the plastic was too thin on, so it was a bit too flexible. I guess I could have just gone with one of the pastry bags. I do have some around because I like to try and bake. But anyhow, we'll see how this works. Sometimes it's good just to experiment. I did see, a, I think it was a guy in Germany, maybe. He tried this method. And uh, it seems to work for him. Now we're starting to lay down uh, the three quarter ounce cloth. And uh, we just want to basically wet it out and make sure we punch any uh, air out or any ripples out of these edges. Because that's where the problems always are. So we're just going to basically build this up. Whoops. I'm just using uh, straight resin now. And now you can see why I like to use these little uh, two by two or thereabouts uh, squares. They're easy to manipulate, go down nicely, and you can. Uh, work them around corners and stuff. What I find is when using great big pieces is the problem we have is uh, they sometimes wrinkle on you when you're not looking and then you spend half the time trying to get a bloody wrinkle out. Anyhow, I'll shut the camera off now and get some more of this done and then uh, we'll be back online. Okay, I've just cut the uh, two ounce cloth into five by eight inch sections. You can see them all there on the left side is for one side, on the right side is for the other. The molds are already uh, set to go. And what we're going to do now is apply resin to the entire mold to allow the two ounce cloth to stick better and that's what we'll do so give me a chance to just get prepped here i've not done the uh left side yet i'm going to just f finish this one but what we're going to do now is switch directly to uh the six ounce cloth and uh, get that laid in so let's get to it but before we do that, I see that we've still got a stubborn air bubble up in that top vertical. So what I'm going to do is just put a couple of layers of, of the uh, two ounce right over it. And that should help us get it out. One of the uh, things you've got to be real careful is not to put so much resin on that uh, your cloth starts to float. Now, uh, what did I do? I went vertical last time, so now we're going to go horizontal. So I'm just going to get it kind of positioned so I can trim it. Little 
cutting this so it forms. We trim any excess that we really don't need here now. Some little bits because we'll use them later. Alright. If you like these instructional videos, please like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you uh, get notified of all the new ones. And uh, in case you don't know, this is actually the final uh, coat that we're doing, or I should say layer. We'll come back to this section a little later when we check everything over. Let it stiffen up a little bit. Okay, as far as direction, a lot of guys go 45s and all this. I don't bother with that. This cloth is uh, unidirectional. And uh, get my half inch overlap. So, as long as I go vertical or horizontal, that's enough. But depending on the cloth you use, surface area etc you might want to uh, go in opposite directions okay what is the mess of this there we go up for later okay i'm not going to double all this out right now because i'm gonna Try the uh, roller trick. Everybody else seems to do it. I've never used the roller. I'm going to attempt it on the, this layup and see if it speeds things up a little bit. I know it would really help on making a mold. I mean, a mold can take you seven or eight hours to make. Obviously, depending on the size of it. But uh, we'll be doing the wings in a couple of weeks. So... Uh, be making a how to make a mold how to make a, a wing plug from a, a 3d print and it's a massive 3d print by the way and uh that will be coming in a week or two so here this this entire section here is going to get cut off it's going to go so i'm not worried about that we're not vacuum bagging this particular layup. We're just doing a straight layup. And then, uh, so it's the shoulders which I need to uh, make sure are strong. Not so much the top, because that, okay, like I say, gets cut away. And uh, I've decided, I think, I will try and get these two Moldavs uh, put together so that tomorrow we can do a uh, separation and see how good a job we did. So I'll uh, probably do it around, well, let's see, it's around 11-ish now. So I should be able to do it uh, a little later. Today, probably around six-ish, I would imagine, if I put the moulds inside, which I intend to do. And, uh, well, that's right, I'm going horizontal with this, aren't I? So, let's get that guy there. All right, there the roller magically appears. Then I'm going to try this method for the first time. Never done it. I'm hoping, uh, it does something good for us. I guess I probably need to put some goop in the tray, but just try and do it this way for now. I'll try and save my tray for when I make the wing molds. I wonder if this squeezes it all out. It should be good. I don't know when I'm supposed to push on it, but just be gentle. Let me just be gentle. 
Well, I think you get the idea, so I'm going to cut the uh, film short now, and the next one is going to be uh, trimming and uh, closing up the moulds. So, stand by. <laughs>